Have you ever wanted to kill your opponents with land? Come along and I'll show you how. Welcome to the Oath Breakdown. If you enjoy fun, budget, Oathbreaker content like this, make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and turn on notifications so you know when I make new content for you. This deck is a challenge that was issued to me by Blood Wolf Girl. She is an MTG gamer that will be starting her own gameplay slash Oathbreaker channel in the near future. So please check out her channel link in the description, and if you could help her get a start, I'd appreciate it. On the Oath Breakdown, I break down a budget Oathbreaker deck designed to introduce new players to the format and build it back up so you can see how the deck works and how it was designed. Now let's get into it. In today's deck, we will entrust our forest to their protector and our Oathbreaker, Nissa Who Shakes the World. Nissa Who Shakes the World costs 3 and 2 green and is a 5 loyalty Oathbreaker. She has a static ability that says whenever we tap a force for mana, we add an additional green mana. If we plus one her, we put three 1-1 one -one counters on up to one target non-creature land we control, untap it, and it becomes a 0-0 zero -zero elemental creature with vigilance and haste that is still a land. If we minus eight Nissa, we get an emblem that says lands we control are indestructible, and then we get to search our library for any number of force cards and put them directly onto the battlefield tapped and then we shuffle our library afterwards. Her static ability will double the mana of our force, and in a mono green deck, that's gonna ramp us way out. Her plus one will let us turn our lands into three three elementals and ramp us by untapping them. And finally, her minus eight makes our lands indestructible, which is excellent protection, and will allow us to dump all the force in our deck right into play. The signature spell that will help Nissa ramp and also turn our lands into even more critters is Hunting Wild. Hunting Wilds is a sorcery that costs three and a green and has a kicker of three and a green. We search our library up to two forest cards and put them onto the battlefield tap and then shuffle our library. If the spell was kicked, we untap the force put into play this way and they become three three green creatures with haste that are still lands. The beauty of this is once Nissa is in play, all of our lands will tap for double mana. And this extra mana will help us pay the tax on this spell and a little bit extra. And as a bonus, if we kicked it, we get two untapped hasty attackers out of the spell that we could also tap for double mana. So that's what's in our command zone. Let's dig into the game plan. We are running a deck that wants to do the unthinkable weaponize our lands. We are going to do this by making them creatures and triggering landfall abilities. How do we win? Our goal is to overwhelm our opponents with an army made up of creatures that are lands and creatures that benefit from lands. Killing with our mana base is a strange and fun strategy, but doing so puts said mana base in the path of destruction. So I would rank this deck at an approximate power level of 5 due to that risk. Now, on to the breakdown. Let's start with the ramp that will help us build our army in, Reforestation. First off, we have Kalani Heart Expedition. It is an enchantment that costs 1 and a green, and it has landfall. Whenever land enters the battlefield under our control, we put a quest counter on Kalani Heart Expedition. If we move three quest counters from it and sacrifice it, we search our library for two basic land cards and put them on the battlefield tab. Animus Awakening costs X and a green. We reveal the top X cards of our library and put all lands from among them onto the battlefield tab and the rest on the bottom of our library in a random order. If we have two or more instant or sorcery cards in our graveyard, we then untap the lands we just put into play. With Nissa in play, her doubling the value of what our force taps for can make this spell amazing. Edge of Autumn costs one and a green. It says if we control four or fewer lands, we search our library for a basic land card and put it on the battlefield tapped. Or if we cycle it by sacrificing a land late game, we get to draw a card. Rampant Growth for one and a green lets us search our library for a basic card and put it onto the battlefield tapped and shuffle our library. 
And finally, Cultivate costs Tuna Green. We search our library for up to two basic land cards, reveal those cards, we put one onto the battlefield tapped and the other into our hand. On to our next section. We are going to use some creatures to also help us get additional lands in play in Green Keepers. Our Boreal Grager costs one green, it has reach, when it enters the battlefield we may play a land card from our hand onto the battlefield tapped and it's a 0-3. Magus of the Candelabra costs one green, it's a 1-2 and if we pay X and tap it, we get to untap X target lands. When we first start out, this card doesn't do much for us, but once our lands start to tap for extra mana, we can tap them, use half that mana to untap them and tap them again, essentially tripling the mana we can get in that turn, which is an amazing effect. Veteran Explorer costs one green and is a 1-1 one, one human soldier scout, and when he dies, each player searches their library for up to two basic land cards and puts them onto the battlefield. This is untapped. Then each player who sh search their library this way will shuffle their library. Veteran Explorer is something we and our opponents can both make use of, but it's going to get us further along than it will them, so we're okay running it. Sakura Tribe Elder for one and a green is a 1-1 one, one Snake Shaman that we can sacrifice to search our library for a basic land card and put it onto the battlefield tapped. Fertilid for two and a green enters the battlefield with two 1-1 one, one counters. If we pay one and green and remove a 1-1 one, one counter from it, target player searches their library for basic land card and puts it onto the battlefield tapped. Spring Bloom Druid costs two and a green and is a 1-1. One, one. When he enters the battlefield, we can sacrifice a land, and if we do, we search our library for two basic land cards and put them onto the battlefield tapped. And last up in this section, we have Nissa, Nature's Artisan. For four and two green, she's a five loyalty planeswalker. If we plus three her, we gain three life. If we minus four her, we reveal the top two cards of our library and we can put old land cards from among them onto the battlefield and the rest into our hand. And if we minus 12 her, creatures we control get plus five plus five and gain trample till end of turn. Personally, I don't think this is the best in Nyssa, but since it was part of the challenge for me to include it in the deck, I did here. Now, we are going to need more cards to keep us growing our forces and our force, respectively. So let's look at the next section, Manure. Return of the Wild Speaker costs four and a green and is an instant and does double duty for us. We can choose one of these two effects. We either draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures we control, or we can have non-human creatures we control get plus three, plus three till end of turn, which is a little bit like an overrun. Shamanic Revelation costs three and two green and is a sorcery that says we draw a card for each creature we control and then we will gain four life for each creature we control with power four or greater, which will be a lion's share of our lands and creatures later on. Aid from the Cowl and is an enchantment with revolt. At the beginning of our end step, if a permanent we control left the battlefield this turn, we reveal the top card of our library, and if it's a permanent card, we may put it onto the battlefield, otherwise we may put it on the bottom of our library. Now, let's look at the creatures and pump that is most benefited from having lands on the battlefield in our next section, Nature's Growth. Scoot Mob costs one green and is a creature insect, it's a 1-1, one, one, but at the beginning of our upkeep, if we control five or more lands, we put four 1-1 one, one counters on Scoop Mob, so this little bug can get big. Next, we have a bigger bug in Crash of Rhino Beetles. It costs four and a green and is a 5-5 five, five with Trample. Once we have ten or more lands on the battlefield, it's going to become a 15-15. And since you've already seen the ramp, you know that's probably possible. Woodborn Behemoth has a similar effect. It's a 4-4 elemental for 3 and 2 green that once we control 8 or more lands, it will get plus 4 plus 4 in trample, making it an 8-8. Stratoscythe for 3 colorless mana comes into play with imprint, and when it does, we search our library for a land card and exile it under Stratoscythe. The equipped creature will get plus 1 plus 1 for each land on the battlefield with the same name as the exile card. Blanchwood Armor for two and a green says enchanted creature we control gets plus one plus one for each forest we control. We want to be attacking with our lands, but first we need to make them creatures, so let's find out how in The Awakening. 
Embodiment of Insight costs four and a green. It's a four, four elemental with vigilance, and it says lands we control have vigilance. It has landfall. When a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may have target land you control become a three, three elemental creature with haste until end of turn. It's still a land. Next we have Liege of the Tangle. For 6 and 2 green, it's an elemental 8-8 eight, eight with Trample. When Liege of the Tangle deals combat damage to a player, we may choose any number of target lands we control and put an Awakening counter on them. Each of those lands is an 8-8 eight, eight green elemental creature for as long as they have an Awakening counter on them. They are still lands. Zendikar's Royal for 3 and 2 green says whenever a land enters the battlefield under our control we create a 2-2 green elemental creature token. And finally, Awakening of Vitugazi costs 3 and 2 green. We put 9 1-1 counters on target land we control and it becomes a legendary 0-0 zero, zero elemental creature with haste named Vitugazi. It is still a land. So let's do a little to protect our creatures, and by that I mean more than just Nissa's ultimate, in Old Growth. Wrapped in Vigor costs one in the green. It says regenerate each creature we control. This is going to protect us from many destroy and lethal damage effects. Next, we have Sylvan Awakening. It is a sorcery for two in a green, and it says until our next turn, all lands we control become two two elemental creatures with reach indestructible in haste there are still lands so not only is this an awakening style card but it also will give our lands indestructible which is extra special now we will often run into trouble with certain permanents while playing this deck so let's look at removing them in cut down rabid bite costs one and a green we have target creature we can control deal damage equal to its power to target creature we don't control, making for a pretty excellent removal spell. Storm the Citadel for 4 and a green says until end of turn creatures we control gain plus 2 plus 2 and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker destroy target artifact or enchantment defending player controls. Since many of our creatures has trample we will be able to make use of this. Kolga, the Titan Ape, for 3 and 3 green, says when he enters the battlefield he fights up to one target creature we don't control. Then whenever he attacks we destroy target artifact or enchantment defending player controls. So regardless of whether or not he does combat damage, we still get that destroy effect. And then if we pay 1 and a green, we can return target human we control to its owner's hand and he'll gain indestructible until end of turn, and he's a 7-6. Now we will be dropping lands into play left and right, and Landfall will help us win the fight in Landfell. For two and a green, we have Evolution Sage. She's a 3-2 Elf Druid, and whenever land enters the battlefield under our control, we proliferate. This is gonna help us with a little bit of the 1-1 counter stuff we have, but moreover, it's gonna help us alt our Planeswalkers earlier, and hopefully a little bit more often. Retreat to Kenzendu for two and a green is an enchantment with landfall. Whenever land comes into play, we can either put a 1-1 counter on target creature or gain two life. Orin Reef Hydra for four and two green is a 5-5 with trample. Whenever land enters the battlefield under our control, we put a 1-1 counter on it. And if the land's a force, we put two 1-1 counters on it instead, so we will be able to make use of that ability. Rampaging Baylos for 4 and 2 green will also help us grow our army. It's a 6-6 six, six with trample and landfall. Whenever land enters the battlefield under our control, we make a 4-4 four, four green beast creature token. Finally, in the next section, let's force our damage through in Overgrown. Overwhelming Stampede costs 3 and 2 green and is a sorcery that reads, Until end of turn, creatures we control gain trample and plus x plus x where x is the greatest power among creatures we control. Overrun for 2 and 3 green says creatures we control get plus 3 plus 3 and trample till the end of turn. Now that we have gone through all the cards in the deck, let's see what we are packing in the mana base. We're running uh, many of these lands because they're going to let us trigger landfall more than once. When Evolving Wilds or Terramorphic Expanse come into play, we can tap and sacrifice them to search our library for basic land card and put it into play tapped, essentially getting two landfall triggers for the cost of one land. 
Blighted Woodland can tap for a colorless, or we can pay three and a green and sack it to search our library for two basic land cards and put them onto the battlefield tapped and then shuffle our library, which is essentially three landfall triggers in the same turn. Next, we have Myriad Landscape. It does enter battlefield tapped. We can tap it for colors, or if we pay two and tap and sacrifice it, we can search our library for two basic land cards that share a type and put them onto the battlefield tapped. And then we're running 19 forests for a total of 23 lands. Now that we have looked at all the cards in the deck, let's do a quick price check. Just a quick reminder, our deck prices include our Oathbreaker, and the shipping costs, but not the costs of basic lands. And they are based on the best available prices on TCG Player at the time of recording. The average deck costs for a Nissa Who Shakes the World deck on oathbreaker.edhrec.com is $238.47. Our deck is going to be a steal at $31.70. If you want to see a breakdown of this deck's cost, there will be a link posted in the description below. Now this deck was built on a budget, but if you have the resources, here are just a couple betterments and improvements you might want to consider. First, we consider playing a Heroic Intervention for 1 and a green. Permanence we control will gain Hexproof and Indestructible until the end of turn. And to add it, we're going to remove Edge of Autumn. Avenger of Zendikar costs 5 and 2 green and is a 5-5 elemental creature. When it enters the battlefield, we create a 0-1 plant for each land we control. And then whenever a land enters the battlefield under our control, we can put a 1-1 counter on each plant we control. To add it, we're going to remove Woodborne Behemoth. Azusa, Lost But Seeking, costs 2 and a green and is a legendary human monk. And she'll allow us to play 2 additional lands on each of our turns. To add her, we're going to remove our Boreal Ranger. Vernal Bloom for 3 and a green says whenever a forest is tapped for mana, its controller adds an extra green mana to their mana pool. To add this, we're going to take out Embodiment of Insight. Baru, Fist of Corosa, costs 3 and 2 green. He's a legendary creature human druid. Whenever a forest comes into play, all the green creatures we control will get plus 1, plus 1 in Trample till the end of turn. And to add him, we're going to remove Storm the Citadel. Lurking Predators cost 4 and 2 green as enchantment. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, we reveal the top card of our library. If it's a creature card, we put it onto the battlefield. Otherwise, we may put that card on the bottom of our library. This is going to help us control our draws, and to add it, we're going to take out the Awakening of Vitugazi. If you like the deck or any of the cards in it, you can support the channel by shopping tcgplayer.com using the link in the description. And if you need gaming supplies that are custom, check out Inked Gaming. If you use either of our affiliate links in the description, you will really be helping out the channel. If you want more deck tech content, then check out the Oath Breakdown playlist or the Holly Deck playlist here on the end card. And again, a huge thank you to my viewers. I can't do this without you guys, and I wouldn't. So please remember to subscribe. Thanks again, and I'm off to Oathbreak another deck.